else that could have easily been called. I know you defensive guys. Anytime you hit the quarterback, it's never a foul. No, that's so. a good. That's a good time. Third down. Need five yards. Durazio throws from Morgan. It's over the top. Can't get it. And Durazio with Chad Dukes wrapped around his ankles. Under some pressure on that play. And Philadelphia came up and pressed across the board. And Eddie Moten came up and took on. He came up and took on Atu Molden and basically took that play away. You see the pressure there at the end. The quarterbacks hate it when they're rolling around your legs. And Dukes, just with an effort play, gets in there. Durazio had to lay it up too high as Moten had undercut the route. Here we go. Fourth down. Chicago needs five yards. Pressed again. Durazio throws. Got the five and more. Touchdown, Atu Molden. 16 yards, Durazio to Molden, and Chicago retakes the lead. You know, we talked to Eddie Moten about his press coverage, and he said sometimes he gets nervous and doesn't have the patience and bails out too soon. Watch him right here. He's going to bail out too soon on Atu Molden and then turn his shoulder. See how he turns to the outside? That gives Molden the cut underneath, forces Moten to flip turn. He gets there too late. Durazio sees the whole thing and delivers it right on time. Perfect execution. Timeout is being called. So actually you're down to the one minute. I had, we went down to the one minute. I told you that those minutes yeah. evaporate in a hurry. They sure did. Well, uh, Chicago looking to go up by seven. Philadelphia will get the ball back. Uh, each team with all of their timeouts intact and Brett Muncy knowing his team needs a win. Here's Keith Gisbert for the point after. Yeah, this is a big one here by Gisbert. And he punches it through. So, a seven-point ball game. One minute to go. How's this one going to finish? Chicago has seen five games this season decided on the last play. This might be number six. That was an awesome show. Awesome. Hey, would you mind? No problem. Me too. So, are you the bass player or the drummer? I'm not in the band. I'm just here for the Bud Light. Who's Penn? Johnny! Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Who's Todd Schischler? What are you doing? I thought you'd be happy. I fixed the loose tiles and I resealed the tub. What? It's a shower caddy. Not that you should, but you could. It's waterproof. Polyseam Seal. 1,001 uses and counting. Starting Monday, April 17th, an NBC week-long competition. You've never seen a show with this much heat. Nine celebrities, each with the help of three top chefs, with only 50 minutes to cook a three-course gourmet meal and then face the judges. It's a little overcooked. It's the wildest, most exciting pressure cooker. Celebrity Cooking Showdown. The week-long event starts Monday, April 17th. For more, go to NBC.com. Tuesday on Scrubs, be there for the first look at the new baby. I'm okay with it. Then breaking down cultural barriers on teachers. You're a black man. Where's your anger? I'm from Maine. My dad's an optician. Not that mad. All new comedy Tuesday on NBC. From New York, we look into the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale. The Dragons, down 25-0, have turned their game with Dallas into a game. Absolutely. You told you it wasn't over. How about Mike Rocek? In the last 11 minutes, this guy's got three touchdowns, an interception, and 108 yards receiving. 39-28, three minutes to go as you see. Counting it down as we send you back to Alan Bestwick and Ray Bentley in Philadelphia. Sounds like uh, things livened up on the island, Al, and we've got a lively one here in Philadelphia, too. Atu Molden has been a stud in the second half for Chicago. Yeah, just amazing. All those numbers came from the second half. 
Molden is kind of a unique guy. If I'm in the kitchen, it's definitely in the morning, and I'm gonna be making some pancakes with pomegranates in them. That's where it's at. I got you now. The last time I went on vacation, it was Texas, and I got a lot of family over there, and it's, I always have a great time. I think bar none really is my favorite athlete is Jerry Rice. Can't get paid for sleeping, so I guess I'd probably have to be a, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably try to do a lot more with my art. Atu Molden, I think would be pretty fair to describe him as a guy who marches to the beat of his own drum. Yeah, he does. He, he lights up a room when he comes in, and he's going to try and maybe light up an onside kick here. I would expect Chicago may just attempt that. Chase to go deep. Steve Smith back for Philadelphia. Seven yards deep in his end zone. Looking for some running room. Nice grab there by Dewan Alfonso. 23 for Chicago, but a 20-yard return for Smith sets Philadelphia up at its 13-yard line. Well, admirable job by Matt Sock stepping in for Philadelphia. He'll go to work here in a minute. First, let's check down with another man who's accomplished much in Philadelphia sports. Not you, Otis, the guy uh, you're sitting with. Well, I have too, but uh, <laughs> more importantly, I'm down here with uh, former Eagle head coach Dick Vermeil, Super Bowl uh, runner-up with the Eagles. Um, your first game here in the New League, what are your impressions of the league? I'm enjoying it very much. It's so close, you know, and, and it's a very fast, quick game, and it, it hits just like everybody else does in the National Football League, so I'm enjoying it. You are very revered here in the city, as I said, took the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Um, what's it like to be on a Philadelphia football team for these fans? Well, you know, the, the Philadelphia fans are so involved with all their teams. If they're here, they're involved with them, whether it be the Eagles or, or the Soul or the 76ers. They they're very intense, loyal fans. All right, thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the game, Coach. Rob Milanese. As Philadelphia, in two plays, marches down the field to the Chicago five-yard line. Yeah, Chicago's got to get a timeout, and they finally do. Walt Hausman, the defensive coordinator, ran out onto the field to call that because they need to save themselves some time if, if uh, Philadelphia were to score. So now the clock management becomes a big factor. So timeout Chicago, just over 39 seconds to go. Philadelphia driving, down by seven. Savoy Dinner Theater presents... Tada! It's five o'clock! <gasps> what shall I feed my family for dinner? Make something? Too tired. Pick something up. But what? But what? She makes me anxious. And now dinner. Subway restaurants. The Italian trio, hot and fresh from the oven. Meatball marinara and chicken parmesan on new toasted garlic bread. And the Italian BMT. Subway! Eat fresh! You're gonna like these guys, though. They're a pretty good crew. Everybody, listen up. This is Levon. Hey, Levon, I'm 120. You're on the 120 today. How are you? So, uh, if there's anything you need, just ask these guys. They'll take care of it, all right? Welcome aboard. Thank you. You ever been around anything this fast before? Yeah. In my last job. See how Army training gives you strength for now, strength for later at GoArmy.com. Places we fly around the world. We know one means more to you than any other. We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. This Tuesday at 10 9 Central, a special chance to catch an all new conviction. I'm innocent. From the creator of Law and Order SVU, young prosecutors in the toughest courts. Is the path of the gunshot wound consistent with the suicide? A special all new conviction, Tuesday, 10 9 Central, on NBC. There's Tony Graziani, the Philadelphia starting quarterback, out with a hamstring injury. Watching his backup, Matt Salk, try and tie this ball game as his team trails Chicago by seven. I think largely in the second half, Chicago's lead due to the efforts of this man, our U.S. Army Iron Man of the game. Boy, Atu Molin, an incredible second half. And you see, here's that last touchdown that puts Chicago in the lead. And 
He's just been all over the field and really lighting it up in the second half. He's the U.S. Army Iron Man of this game. Incredible performance after being almost invisible in the first half. And uh, Atu Molden doing all he can to get his team in position for an important win. Now let's see what Matt Sock can do, the Philadelphia backup quarterback. They have the ball at the Chicago 5, first and goal, trailing by 7. And off, inside. Chicago's got to take another timeout. They want to definitely have time to counter back with a score if Philadelphia is able to get it in. So that's Chicago's second timeout. And it was Wes Hours, the fullback, who picked up about two and is going to set up a second down and goal from the three. Well, I'll tell you what, Brett Muncy's team has had trouble putting together four quarters of full effort this year. The coach told us in our meetings with him yesterday, they had a little letdown at the end of the first half, but you can't fault the intensity with which they played the second half today. Yeah, and that's the thing, that, the message that he had to his football team just getting prepared for this week, that they need it for four quarters, and they, they need it all week long leading up to those four quarters. And they, they, like you said, on a couple bumps in the road, but they're right here in this ball game with a chance to pull it out. Second down and goal from the three for Philadelphia. Sean Scott, 88, gets the handoff. Knocked down quickly. John Moyer, 99, in there for Chicago. And it will bring up third and goal in Chicago, forced to take another timeout. 28 seconds to go. Now third and goal the pressure begins to build on Philadelphia because in their game last week against Austin twice they had a first and goal and didn't score right and then Austin came back on the very next play when they got the ball back and scored the game winning touchdown so yep. what Philadelphia now that you know throw the clock out the window you need to try to get into the end zone right now here on this play you know some guys say hey, maybe try to eat a little more of the time off and go for it all or nothing on fourth down not a believer in that. I think you need to try and get it into the end zone right here. Third down and goal. Soft to throw. Touchdown, Philadelphia Rob Milanese. You know, some people say, hey, go for two, get your win, but you're at home. There's plenty of time left. Kick your extra point and tie this thing up. South finds a wide open Milanese on this play. Milanese is the guy down at the bottom, a little rub route, a little cross with with uh, Sean Scott. Chicago wasn't able to pick it up. And look at South get rid of this football right on time. Perfect execution of the play. He made that throw away from the defender, which allowed Milanese to get it. For the tie, Todd France, the kicker, is good. So Rob Milanese, whose coach said needed to have a big day today, kind of hinting he might be in trouble as far as his future with this team. He has had a big day today. Four catches, 81 yards, two touchdowns, including a huge one with 26 seconds to go. Next time on Circle of Trust. Look, this relationship isn't working out. I need to change from net zero. Look, forget that zero. Netscape can get you online for just $9.95 a month. And fewer online ads than Net Zero? <laughs> Please, lots fewer. Netscape gives you free web accelerator and McAfee's comprehensive virus protection. You make me feel so safe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> get Netscape. Sign up today. I've got sunshine on a cloud on a cloudy day when it's cold outside. I've got the month of May. Well, I guess you said what can make me feel, what can make me feel this way. My girl, my girl, my girl. Talking about my girl. That's all right, dog. You made the song his own. Little Debbie, unwrap a smile. Starting Monday, April 17th, an NBC week-long competition. You've never seen a show with this much heat. Nine celebrities, each with the help of three top chefs, with only 50 minutes to cook a three-course gourmet meal and then face the judges. It's a little overcooked. It's the wildest, most exciting pressure cooker. Celebrity Cooking Showdown. The week-long event starts Monday, April 17th. For more, go to NBC.com.
Tie ball game, 26 seconds to go. Philadelphia has just drawn even with Chicago. That is Mike Brown, who's had a pretty huge ball game today and made the ADT defensive play of the game that Philadelphia really needed. Yeah, they were down seven at this point. Chicago driving. Mike Brown pulls it from Atu Molden and off the wall and brings it back in the other direction. That's the ADT defensive play of the game. Set things up for Philadelphia to have a chance to get back into this ball game. Now Brown out to cover on special teams as the Soul will kick it away to Chicago. Chicago out of timeouts. Philadelphia with all three of theirs. 26 and a half seconds to go. Carlos Wright has returned to kick off for a touchdown earlier today. And the ball bounced off the uh, top of the end boards, I believe, yeah, and that's going to go as a touchback. A kick ball hits the wall, it's dead right there. So that is tough luck for Chicago. Take a look at that ball coming down on the trajectory. And see it touches the wall right back in this area. As soon as it does, it's blown dead. So instead of trying to get some kick return yardage that they've been very successful with today, Chicago will have to go to work at its own five-yard line. No timeouts. 50 uh, 45 yards to go to a possible win. Yeah, they'll be working the sidelines, working the edges so they can get out of bounds to stop the clock. Oh. Matt DeRazio, the quarterback. With time. Across the middle, Dennison Robinson with the catch. And is rubbed out at the 17-yard line. And the clock will stop there on the out-of-bounds play. And they're going to have to add some time back onto the clock. The uh, timekeeper was eight little, seconds, please. A little slow getting it shut off there. Yeah, you got the home clock operator, right? Yeah. yeah that's not supposed to be a, a factor, but more <laughs> often than not, it is. It happens. So 18 seconds put on the clock. Yeah. Chicago, no stranger to close games. Five of their ten games this year have been decided on the oh. final play. And the kicker, Keith Gisbert, looking on. Maybe he'll have a chance to try and win the ball game. First and ten. Pressure on DeRazio. Flag is down. An incomplete intended for Johnson. That's in the area of offensive holding. And E.J. Burke for Philadelphia is down in the backfield. One of the fine defensive okay. linemen. Number 99, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still first step. And flagged on John Moyer. Yeah, here's John Moyer right up at the top there. You see him working on E.J. Burt. Burt slapping at the hands, and Moyer gets that arm bar across the chest and he then grabs a hold of the shoulder pads and drags him down for good measure. So they back the ball up to the eight-yard line. First and 20 for Chicago. 12 seconds to go. Throw to Molden with some running room. Got to get out of bounds. And he does. Boy, that was a nice close. effort. They, they could have called that. His forward progress stopped before he got to the wall and left that clock to run. But the officials give Chicago a break there. Stopped that clock with six seconds left. I think you got time for one more play. You got to throw it to the wall so you can get that thing out of bounds in a hurry. And then you bring Keith Gisbert out, maybe decide this game, or maybe you go to overtime. And that's the, the thing with the rush is they do have overtime in their back yeah. pocket. Worst thing like they're going to lose if they don't get it done. Yep. Worst thing that's going to happen to them. Second down. Throw near side, incomplete. Clock stops. 2.9 seconds to go. Enter the kicker with a chance to win the ball game. Keith Gisbert, 29-year-old in his fourth year in the AFL, missed the first eight weeks of the season, injured, injured in warm-ups for the opening week game. This is his third week back down. He's four out of five in his field goal attempts since returning. This is a long one, though. It's going to be a 48-yard try. He's one for one from that distance this year. Juan Alfonso the hold. Gisbert legs it out. Off the arm, no good. That's a live ball. Steve Smith on the return for Philadelphia. 
He's not going to be able to do anything with it. We are going to overtime. Well, Chicago wants a safety. They, they don't think Smith got himself out of the end zone. He did actually come out, ended up back in, but his progress was stopped in the field of play, so that is not a safety. But boy, Mike Hohensey was lobbying. <laughs> So overtime coming up. Check out Watch Smith here. He does get out, but his forward progress. Yeah, this forward progress was stopped in the field of play. I so. guess I guess the argument would be that he ran back into the end zone himself, but a Chicago player had his hands on him. Yeah, they, they, they stopped it with the forward progress. This will be the first ever overtime game for the Philadelphia Soul. And for Chicago, they have had uh, two games go to overtime this year. They won both of them. They beat Nashville and San Jose in overtime. So Chicago may be a little more comfortable in this position. Okay. Overtime rules in arena football. Each team will get a possession. And then once each team has had a possession, and if it's still tied, then you'll go to sudden death at that point. Graziani, one of the team captains, went out. Both teams have to have a possession of the ball. All right, you're the visiting team, you'll make the coin toss. Call it. That's the call is heads. Heads is the call. It is tails. You guys have won the toss. It's where you guys want to kick. Yeah, we're this little discussion over who wants what with the one possession rule. Do you want the ball first or you want to let them have you the know, ball first? There's several schools of thought. Sometimes you think, you know what, we'll take the ball first, we'll score, and then if they score to tie us, then we get the next possession in sudden death. However, most teams will go for two at that point. All right. So it's really two schools of thought. I was always a guy that I didn't like going for two and having a play be decided on one, or a game decided on one play. Yeah. So I usually took the football. Philadelphia will take the football. And both teams trying to get an important win for their playoff hopes. Overtime when we come back. Come in any Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership store and you'll find brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers. Always at the guaranteed lowest price, whether you buy or lease to own and no credit checks. So, do the math. Nobody, 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 nobody beats Aaron's. Do the math. Nobody beats Aaron's. ParadisePoker.net presents the... I am a stay-at-home mom. I have four children. Almost every night we could find something that in some way related to us. The school closures definitely was a huge issue. Tell me what's going on and what I can do about it. Parents in the Granite School District have some serious decisions to think about after tonight's school board vote. It kind of makes you realize, okay, everything isn't surrounding just this little home and what I do, but there's other big issues going on that you need to be aware of. Cobia Center in Philadelphia, where the Chicago Rush and the Philadelphia Soul are going to overtime. We welcome those of you who've been watching the Dallas-New York game. Alan Bestwick with Ray Bentley and Otis Livingston. The overtime rules in the AFL. Each team gets one possession. If the teams are tied after each has a possession, then it becomes sudden death. Coach Muncy decided to take the football. You know, some guys think, you know, they just soon give the football to the opponent and then see what they have to do to win the game. And then obviously you have to go for two if the other team has scored and converted. So Keith Gisbert to kick. And back deep for Philadelphia, Steve Smith, number 84, takes the kick seven yards deep in the end zone. Nice return out to the 18-yard line. That's where Philadelphia will go to work at its 25-yard line. Matt South coming at, out at quarterback. His first pass he threw today, Allen, was intercepted. Since then, he's 5 of 7 for 48 yards and a touchdown. So he's settled in there pretty nice. Saw coming in just at the beginning part of the fourth quarter when Tony Graziani was injured on a scrambling play. Sock's first play was a fourth and goal that resulted in that pick. But then the Philadelphia defense got an interception and swung the momentum back in their favor. What you call being thrown into the fire. Yeah. Sock's goal is Rob Mooney's. 
who caught the touchdown that led to the tie score. Across midfield with a seven-yard gain. It'll set up second down and short for Philadelphia. Again, that's, I'm sorry. That's all right. I was just going to say, just reiterating the playoff picture here. Philadelphia 5-5, five and five, Chicago 4-6, and six, six games to go. Bubble teams, they need the win. Yeah, it, it's not a do-or-die situation, right. but it is rather dire. Yeah. Second down. Soft throws over the top of Mooney. So he got a couple of fingers on it, but that was it. And a late flag has come in. I like Matt South's release. He, he throws a, a hot football, and it comes out in a hurry. Started one game earlier this year. Illegal defense. Number 55 with an outside twist. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Curtis Eason for Chicago. Tag there. And don't forget, coming up next, Champ Car Racing back. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. One of the biggest races of the season for the Champ Cars. Sebastian Bourdais, the two-time series champ, tries to kickstart his quest for a third title. And that's next. Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach on NBC after football. Penalty yards give Philadelphia a first down. Matt Sock throws. It is Steve Smith. The offensive specialist who's had kind of a quiet day. He gets uh, the catch here for some short yardage. Yeah, just a check down guy on the back side. And you notice Matt Salk is not getting hit as much as Tony Graziani was earlier on. And I think that's due to his quick release. He, he gets rid of that football in a hurry. Brings it right back by the ear and zip. It's out of there. Matt Salk, 30 years old, played his college ball at Utah State. 6'1", 225, pretty good size for quarterback in this league. Here's Sean Scott looking for the goal line. Drag down short. Jeremy Nurdle is one of the Chicago players wrapped around his feet, as is Dennison Robinson, number 21. Again, the strong arm by South. Watch him. His body is going to be set up to throw down the middle. He's open, but yet he's still got the arm strength to get it out there on a rope to Sean Scott in a hurry. Did that get tipped again? Because it came out, I, it was kind of... I don't know. He's got kind of a weird ball. You know, sometimes he throws a little bit of a, a knuckle ball. And it had a little bit of a wounded wobble to it there. Like it, maybe someone in the uh, defensive line had put a finger to it. It was possible. He gets it there in a hurry, I'll tell you that. First and goal. Hand off to Wes Owls, the fullback. Touchdown, Philadelphia. What a nice drive by the Philadelphia soul. Matt Salt came in and did what he has been hired to do, and that's take care of business. When his number's called, and they did that, driving down the field, throwing pinpoint passes, then they turn it over to the running game, and Wes Hours plunges in for his second score of the day. And the fourth running touchdown of the day for Philadelphia. Very effective with their running game. And now a huge point after try for Todd France, the kicker. Because remember, Chicago does get the ball. Punched it through. Never a doubt on that one. So Philadelphia with a nice drive down the field, takes the lead by seven, and then puts all the pressure now on the Chicago offense to protect the ball, pick up first downs. Well, they got it. They're going to have to get a touchdown, and then they're going to go for two, Alan. So this, this game is going to come down to the final play once again for the Chicago rush. Now, the go for two is your, your, your opinion of what Mike Cohen sees thinking is being on the road in overtime. Well, the problem is, is you know, oh, yeah, because if, it goes he, to if sudden he kicks death. it, yeah, it goes to sudden death then. And yeah. so then, you know, you're relying on your defense, which is something you don't want to have to do, particularly in overtime. Yeah. Mike Cohen see trying to pick up his 100th head coaching win in the AFL. Already third all-time in victories. What a milestone. Yeah, you know, it, it means that he's been around quite a while. Yeah. In fact, the entire history of the league, Mike Cohen see has been involved in the league as a player or a coach for the entire, entire 20 years of existence. His team has been plagued by injuries for most of the middle part of its season. They came into this game today having lost four of their last five. Got a couple of big players back from injured reserve today. John Moyer, DJ Blyseth. Had some big momentum changing plays on special teams. A kick return for a touchdown, a missed field goal return for a touchdown. And Carlos Wright with a chance for a kick return here. Got room. And a nice shoestring tackle by 31 Raheem Orr for Philadelphia. 
Wright was about a half a step away from taking that one to the house. He sure was. He changed speeds, and then he hit that seam right there. And if Raheem Hoare wasn't able to get the shoelaces, we might have been looking at the two-point conversion, do or die. Yep. So Chicago will take over at the Philadelphia 16-yard line. Their quarterback, Matt DeRazio, 20 of 31 today, 240 yards, four touchdown passes against two interceptions. An interception here, and the ball game's over because Chicago's now had its possession. DeRazio throws. Johnson trying to get away and hang it on to the shirt tails his Reggie Doster but Johnson into Chicago into Philadelphia territory rather down to the 15. Good 19 yard pickup on that just a check down route Grazio got it out quick and they're picking on Reggie Doster on the back side here with Johnson and Johnson almost breaks this tackle brings her into the end zone Doster just got a hold of the shirt tail there to bring him down. What happened to the old tearaway jerseys right yeah, when you need them. First and 10 from the Philadelphia 15 from Matt DeRazio, the Chicago quarterback. Flag there, that'll be on Philadelphia. DeRazio to tuck it and run, he's got room. And he's gonna be down inside the five yard line. And another late flag comes in after the end of the play. That's what DeRazio does quite well. We haven't seen much of it today, but he's the league's leading rusher coming in today. And that's, that's how he does it with the little scrambles there and then Makes nice decisions out in the open fields. Scrambled for 13 there. Let's we'll see what the multiple fouls are. Now the first penalty is going to be on Philadelphia. The linebacker was moving right. forward at the snap. We'll have to check the second penalty. Illegal formation on the defense. Moving forward at the, prior to the snap. The penalty is declined. Results of the play, first down. They picked up the second flag and waved it off. That linebacker Chad Dukes being right here. He's going to get the early start. The Mac linebacker has to be stationary at the snap. Can't move into what they call the second neutral zone. So ball at the two and a half yard line. First and goal for Chicago. Bob McMillan, the fullback, with the handoff. And he is stopped, but he's at the one yard line. Mike Mowency is the master at coming up with trick plays down in this area of the field. And you know that the thing he's got to consider is he needs his touchdown, but he also needs to save a little something for that two-point conversion because that's what he'll go for to win this ball game if they do punch it in. So it's second and goal from the one. McMillan is the fullback, 44. Go! Johnson in motion, DeRazio, the quarterback, stood up, still trying, nothing, third down. Boy, Brett Muncy's out there coaching on the sideline on the opposite side from Mike Hohensey, and he's got his defense going, he's cheering him on, going crazy over there, he's got that look in his eye. Nice push by the Philadelphia defensive front here. Yeah, Ernest Allen right there in the middle, he's the guy who really kind of blocked that thing up. In overtime here in Philadelphia, Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach is next right after football. It is third down and goal from the one. New quarterback for Chicago, Michael Bishop is into the game. He tries for the sneak. They're checking the spot. He got it. Touchdown, Chicago. They put in a whole new package for Michael Bishop down here. In, the, in this area, that's what they've got him here for. You saw Mike Mowency hold up the two fingers. They're going for two. The question would be, will it be Bishop or DeRazio? That's a great question. Looks like they're talking. Mowency's talking to Matt DeRazio down on the sideline. You see the good push from Bishop. Definitely got that thing across the plane. But it's DeRazio who will do it all right here, right now. Game on the line. Two-point conversion try for Chicago. It succeeds, they win, it fails, they lose. Oh. Philadelphia gets the win. He's molded. Garazio to throw. Scrambling. Intercepted! Intercepted by Eddie Martin. He's gonna take it back the other way. Philadelphia wins. Boy, Garazio might have been able to run it in. He threw back against the body, laying it down. The number one cardinal sin of a quarterback, and Eddie Martin was waiting right there for it. 
interception of the day for Philadelphia. Matt D'Arazio only had thrown three interceptions the entire season. But Eddie Moten steps in front of the D'Arazio pass and picks it off in the end zone on the two-point conversion try and secures the victory for the Philadelphia Soul. Well, Matt D'Arazio is not going to sleep well for a couple days after this one. Oh, no. Eddie Moten's going to sleep like a baby. Here he is. Watch D'Arazio. Nothing there initially. Good coverage. Now he rolls out to his right. I don't know. It looked to me like he still had a little bit of room to take it down the field. Decided to throw across the body. Moten steps in front and makes the play of the day. D'Arazio ran in a lot early in the season. Didn't hesitate to pull the ball down and run, but it's something that his coaches have been working with him on is, is not being so quick to scramble. In this case, we'll never know. Uh. You know what, Matt, uh, Chad Dukes had a little bit of an angle. I, I don't yeah. think it was a bad call, <laughs> but maybe maybe you hold on a little bit. But there's the, the raw exuberance and excitement of a rookie head coach getting a critical win. And Mike Cohen C with the opposite reaction. He's it's wide open, wide he said. Open. You know, and Atu Molden was open. Well, Otis is down on the field with the winning coach. Coach Muncy, as soon as that last pass was picked off, there was an explosion on this sideline. Talk about the emotional uh, efforts that went into this game. I tell you what, guys, I'm just proud of this group because there's been a little question whether they're, they play four quarters hard. And I think we proved, <laughs> we proved to ourselves today that we've got a team that will fight. Okay, we've just been through some ups and downs, and that's part of learning each other. But, guys, I'm just proud of it. I think this is a great game for the league and a great ga great day for Philadelphia. You talked about the pressure of playing for uh, Ron Jaworski at John Bon Jovi. Just moments ago, Jaws came over and gave you a big hug. How'd that feel? Guys, they want to win, and I understand that. And that's, you know, that's all you can ask for as an owner. Sure, the heat's on every week, but uh, that's, that's the only way you should have it. Uh, we come out and work hard. Every day at practice, and it's sure it paid off today. All right, congratulations, Coach, on a big win. All right, back upstairs to you guys. Intercepted two-point conversion in overtime. Philadelphia with a one-point win, 56-55. to 55. Next on NBC Sports, the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. For Otis Livingston and Ray Bentley, I'm Alan Bestwick. What a fantastic ball game. Philadelphia wins. You've been watching the AFL on NBC. first time you had seen this performance out of context, you would have thought, like me, it was a complete mess. No. Sorry. Taylor, I like you. You've got a great voice. But that was like some hideous... Tony Graziani told me Sock has as good an arm as anybody in this league, but that time he overthrows Rob Milanese, number 15 in white, who just couldn't locate the football. And he threw a shoe. It's hard enough to run a great pass route in this league with two shoes on. But yeah. when you're down to one and you start to wobble just a little bit, a blown tire in Philadelphia fortunate that nothing bad happened on that play with Milanese trying to get open. Rob Milanese out of the University of Pennsylvania. There he is. I'm sure they taught him how to uh, tie a shoe and instead of trying to <laughs> Cram the shoe into the or the foot into the uh, Nike. He is uh, taking his due time. That's one of the strengths of the league for players on the field. If you have an equipment malfunction mm -hmm. or anything of that nature, they'll hold up play to let you stay in because of the substitution rules. If you have to go out of the game, you're considered quote unquote dead for the rest of that quarter, and that hurts a team's ability. So they give you a little extra time to get your gear ready as we look at Brett Muncy, the rookie coach of the Philadelphia Soul, trying to propel this team towards a playoff berth in his first season. He has been in the AF2, the developmental league in Augusta, and with the Tennessee Valley Vipers in Huntsville, hey. Alabama, as that pass falls incomplete from Matt Salk. And Matt Salk played for Brett Muncy with Tennessee Valley. Exactly. So they have a history together before Matt Salk went on to Louisville. We see his numbers early in the game. He had a season with Louisville in AF2. It was one for the ages where he threw 99 touchdown passes in a season. So it's easy to understand why Brett Muncy has a lot of confidence in Matt Salk leading this team, even though Tony Graziani's hurt. On third down, looking, and he throws a BB. 
but no connection for Rob Milanese because Monty Montgomery was with him stride for stride defensively, and it brings up fourth down. And this is as strong a unit as Nashville's had on the field all year in the defensive secondary. Monty Montgomery, Cornelius Bonner, and Reggie Stevens, all terrific cover guys who also like to hit you. Now Mon a no, go ahead, Eli. 39-yard 30, field goal try for Todd France. From this distance, he is two of three this year. He's hit a 51-yarder already this season, and that one is off the iron. It is then off the hands of T.T. Tolliver and out of bounds, so it will be a touchback, and the football will belong to Nashville when play resumes. So we have gone four minutes and 31 seconds of this opening period here in Nashville. No score as the Cats take over. I woke up in the middle of the night, terrified. Someone tried to come in my house. Fortunately, we had an ADT security system. Mrs. Parker, this is ADT. We're receiving an alarm. Are you all right? Yes, we're okay. But I'm glad ADT was there, watching out for my family. Don't take chances. Take control of your family's safety with ADT, America's number one security company. Call now and save up to $200 on ADT protection packages. ADT, always there. In competition, injuries happen. It's part of the game. And to get back your level of performance takes a lot of hard work, discipline, and the best health care. HealthSouth is the nation's leading provider of outpatient diagnostic, surgery, and rehabilitation services. So we can help you get back fast to the action, the competition, and the glory. We know your body. We understand your spirit. We get you back. Here in Vegas, the action's heating up at the Arena Football Celebrity Table. Let's go, coach. Hey, pipe down, poker brat. I bet 100. Make it 300. He cannot do that. Illegal procedure, Ditka. What'd I do? Personal foul, Ditka. What are you talking about? You're out of here! You're not This bad. June, the AFL's Get championship it. game, Arena Bowl 20, is playing Vegas. Don't miss the party. For tickets, call 1 866 AFL Tix. Go, wait! I'll give you a security! Welcome back, everybody, to Nashville. Eli Gold, Charles Davis, Matt Stewart with you. There you see the offensive starters brought to you by EA Sports. Glenn Sterner throwing to T.T. Tolliver. Gornery Fleming with a good running back in the case of Frank Carter. Sterner looks the defense off and unloads to the 11-yard line where the ball comes loose on the tackle of T.T. Tolliver, but he gets the football back. But good hard licks being passed early in the ball game by Philadelphia. I'm wondering if the offensive lineman for Nashville, I think it might have been Joe Minucci, number 98, may have knocked the ball free trying to block for T.T. Tolliver after that catch. He unloaded a big one, and it wasn't long thereafter that the ball came free. Minucci, a second-year pro out of the University of Delaware, who led the catch with five sacks last year. Has four and a half this year when he plays on defense. Sterner has time. He has Tolliver. He hangs on and gets him for the touchdown. He gave it a little bit of extra, but T.T. Tolliver hangs on for a 38-yard touchdown reception. Then a penalty flag thrown on Eddie Moten, and there are those bubbling over emotions we had talked about in the opening of our telecast. These two teams just do not like each other. And you don't often see a quarterback yeah. getting involved in this, and Clint Sterner was front and center, taking up for what for what he perceived an injustice against his teammates. I believe the whole thing started after the touchdown with Tolliver taunting Eddie Moten and shoving the ball in his face. Moten shoved Tolliver, and then after that, it seemed to break. The Stevens started to have these little firefights, started to break out here, there, and everywhere. Before long, they all came together in a cluster. Last year, when these teams played early in the year, James Barron, the lineman for the Nashville Cats, was accused of and was fined for allegedly spitting at then Philadelphia head coach Michael Trigg. 
And that was the beginning of the ugliness that has just festered between these two teams. Plus, they're both playing for something big tonight. Philadelphia really wants to be consistent. You know, they've kind of gone win-loss, win-loss, win-loss for the last number of weeks. And here comes the call from our referee. Tom McCabe will make the call. The result of the play is a touchdown. And after the touchdown, we have two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on the offense. Both of those fouls will be enforced after the kickoff. So, so that, two yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct calls. So after the kickoff, if I'm correct, Eli, that's 20 yards tacked on. Right, after the run back, they'll then take those 20 yards and add them to the mix. And remember, that's a great catch by T.T. Tolliver. And see, that's where it started. Yeah, that's where the it began. taunted Eddie Moten right there, shoved the ball in his face. Terrific job by the officials getting it correct right from the beginning because oftentimes it's the second guy that gets caught. This time they caught the first guy right off the top. Jason Ball with the extra point. And take a look at this grab. It was a good bit of concentration by Tolliver. And remember, the wall is live this year. Now, wow, frankly, he, rolls over. he rolled over. He seemed to touch him before he got in the end zone, but the end result, touchdown Nashville. So it is a 7-0 Nashville lead. There comes Minucci. And the feverish emotions begin to bubble. Athletic retailer of the Arena Football League, Champ Sports, where sport lives. On a good day, I would barely make a splash. Now, I hope for as much impact as possible. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. My pot of gold, your daddy's little girl till heaven home. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. Further announced the, the penalties and clarified what he had said. Instead of two penalties on Nashville, there will indeed be one on Nashville, one on Philadelphia. So they are now offsetting penalties, and you're up to speed as we check in downstairs with Matt. Eli and with T.T. Tolliver, spectacular play to get this game started. Kind of run us through the play and tell us what happened. Okay. So first of all, it was a good call by my coach. You know, he called a post route. I ran a good post route, the quarterback threw a good ball. It was a great catch, man, on, air, on all parts of the offense. The offensive line, the quarterback, and the receiver, we did a good job of executing our play. A little <laughs> bad blood between these teams? Uh, no, not really, you know. We just tried to come out here and just set the tone, you know, try to set the tempo. Whichever team hit the hardest to play fast, that's when it's going to be the most physical, and that's what we're trying to do, try to be the most physical team out here today. Thanks, T.T. Okay, all right, Eli. Thank you, as we uh, trust us, it was an outstanding reception. It was, it was terrific yeah. because he caught it off of the boards. My only question at the end, I thought he was contacted. I thought it should have been on the one, not a touchdown. Here's Steve Smith, look at the opening up the middle. The kicker to try and get him and he does. Jason oh, Ball, God. the kicker, with an open field tackle. How about that? A 32 yard run back. Eli, that's as pretty an open field tackle as you're going to see, regardless that it was a kicker. He did a great job centering up because Steve Smith had him in the middle of the field. Watch the hole open, and then watch Steve Smith motor through it. Now, when you get a, a guy lined up in the middle of the field, you've got two ways to go. Normally, the, ki the kick returner wins that battle. But in this case, Jason Ball, terrific job moving his feet and bringing down Steve Smith. On the field, the Philadelphia coach, Brett Muncie, was in the ear and in the face of referee McCabe trying to get a clarification on why there were no penalty mark off. Yeah, he thought he was getting an additional 20 yards yeah. on that play. Again, we told you that he, McCabe did clarify 
that the offs the penalties indeed were offsetting and Brett Muncy apparently while talking to the team during the timeout as you lip readers of America can tell uh, he did not a agree nor did he obviously hear the explanation and you could understand why he got the ball midfield which is great field position but imagine tacking on an additional 20 and having it first down there's a nice slant to Sean Scott the wide receiver from Millersville Pennsylvania who gets the football down to the 14 no of a mill spotted now at about the 16 yard line for Scott his 55th reception of the year and what has to happen now for Philadelphia Jim Kubiak is their offensive coordinator they need to settle in and find a way to tie this game up and kind of start over you don't want to have the officials get involved when you're worried about them more than you're worried about your opponent sock over the top one hand pulling it down Steve Smith touchdown that wasn't in your face to Nashville. T.T. Tolliver, you can do your job. How about Steve Smith? Watch this one-hand grab. Terrific concentration because watch the defender cross in front of him right before wow. he catches it. That is great focus by Steve Smith. And we have a chance to have a tie ball game, and Philadelphia did exactly what they needed to do. Focus on the task at hand, and they got the job done on that drive. With or without Stickham, Fred Bolitnikoff could not have done any better. Then did Steve Smith the extra point by Todd France and we are all tied at seven apiece here in Nashville Tennessee that was a two play 24 yard drive to tie it up we're coming right back at cash two remaining opening period tied at seven as we check in downstairs. Eli tit for dad here tonight. Two spectacular grabs to start this ball game. I have Steve Smith here. Tell us about that one. Well, I just kept my eyes on him. You know, I knew we had to make me that point, so uh, just focused real hard on it. Just snatched it in. How's the hamstring? Uh, it's a little tight. You know, I tweaked a little bit um, this week in practice, but I'd be okay. All right, Eli, back to you. All right, guys. Thanks, Steve Smith. One of the absolute best in this uh, league for a number of years. Looking one way, going the other on the screen to Joe Minucci, who'll pick up a yard. That's the fourth reception of the season for the big lineman out of Delaware. And there's Chad Dukes, who's been around this league for six years, in on the tackle. Yeah, that was a great defense. Sean Scott, the Jack linebacker, stopped things initially and forced the play inside where Chad Dukes finished it off. But now we know why Steve Smith was caught by the kicker. He's got a tight hamstring. Mm -hmm. He'll be telling her, hey, it's my hammy. If yep. it wasn't a hammy, I was gone. That's it. <laughs> and even if there isn't a hammy, he has a hammy. He has one now. Knocked down across the middle that time. Big Wayne, Missouri, and Ernest Allen. Those guys are there in the middle. Chad Dukes as well to knock it down, as you see the Philadelphia Soul defense brought to you by EA Sports. Yeah, Chad Dukes back-to-back -back nice plays, stopping the screen of Minucci, and in this case, not able to get back to the quarterback on the pass rush, got up in the pass lanes and batted it back at Clint Sterner, making it third and long for Nashville. First third down play of the night for the catch. Sterner sidesteps pressure and he's going to run. And he breaks away and runs this forward. He got away from Donnie Klein, number 56, and shows the emotion of a hard-earned first down effort. And I really thought this play would break bigger. He, Eli actually when he's turned to, when he just started to run, but he ends up running into Donnie Klein, who drags on him, and sheer force of effort from Clint Sterner got the first down. Because for a moment there, I thought he would be able to sidestep to his right and really break into the secondary. But no matter, Clint Sterner picks up a, a hard fought first down for Nashville. Tied at seven, as you see, opening period. Here in Nashville, the pump and then the throw. T.T. Tolliver to the 22-yard line. You know, there's nothing wrong with the other quarterback, Leon Murray, who had been the backup for Sterner, or Glenn Gann, for that matter, who served as the backup tonight. There's Leon. Leon's good. He runs a team well, has good physical skills, but those intangibles, you mentioned it earlier, the leadership, that little... That, that it, whatever yep. it is, Sterner's got it. It's kind of like Curly in Sli City Slickers. That one yeah. thing, mm -hmm. Clint Sterner has it. There's Dan Alexander. And the big guy has the necessary yardage. Shetty Moten and Kevin Gaines 
running Alexander off the play. A little of that big boy football that Pat Sperduto likes to talk about. His running offense, 28 and a half, nearly 29 yards a game on the ground for that man, which of course goes against uh, most teams conventional wisdom. Well, it's twofold for Nashville. One, they want to be physical. That's why they use the running game. And two, they want to slow down your pass rush by utilizing the running game as a changeup. Sterner, wide open Hillary. And Jarek Hillary makes the grab and gets inside the six down to the five yard line. That's 13 yards on the pickup. He had Eddie Moten and Mike Brown both covering him, but Hillary's, he's an elusive type. We're also seeing the maturation of Clint Sterner as a quarterback, Eli. Two of the last three pass plays, he's wanted to get deep. And both times he's looked deep, but he's had to come off the deep receiver and check down to a shorter receiver. That's what the Nashville coaches have told us all year. They've been working with Clint Sterner on doing more of, and we're seeing that this evening. Hillary in motion, gets the handoff. And Jarek Hillary, late of Tennessee State University, picks up a yard down to the four. Hillary, ideal for this league, number one there in blue, because collegiately he was both a running back and a safety at Tennessee State. And of course, you played two ways in this league. One of my all-time favorite players in this league because there's nothing Jarek Hillary can't do. He holds, oftentimes, he won't tonight, but he'll hold for extra points and field goals. Right. He can play defense for you, as you've already mentioned, he can play offense. He can be your emergency kicker, your emergency quarterback. Jarek Hillary, Mr. Dependable. Eighth play of the drive for Nashville. Sterner gets away, and there's a souvenir for section 119. Lots of quick pressure on the quarterback and the man in the front row <laughs> getting his just accolades from the crowd. He'll be seeking a tryout from Casperduto very soon. But this is a very intelligent play by Clint Sterner. Rather than trying to slot it into Jarek Hillary and make a tough throw in the end zone, he threw it away to live to fight another down because the pressure from Dwayne, Missouri, number 95, was right in his face. And they're checking Clint Sterner out for a possible injury. And they're gonna take a timeout, the Nashville Cats will, instead of pulling their player, in this case, Sterner, because of injury, call a timeout. It'll give him time to get his wits about him. Again, Sterner just returning a week ago after an injury suffered a fractured tibia in week seven in the loss at Utah and returned last week in the win at Las Vegas and returned well, going 11 of 20, 179 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And this is a nice move by the Nashville coaching staff because they want him, as you had mentioned, Eli, to get his wits back from under him. But watch this, all 16, and watch how the play evolves. Clint Sterner looking downfield, downfield. See how he has to tuck it and hold it? And then he comes to the check down because he wanted to go down deeper. Checked it down to Jarek Hillary for a big first down for Nashville. The maturation of a quarterback. We're seeing it with Clint Sterner. Pat Perduto looks on. And now the snap. Sterner off Tolliver's fingertips. It is off the top of the wall and then off the actually the facade of the lower deck. Alertly, Mike Brown said if it goes off the wall, it's a live ball, but it also hits the facade of the lower deck, and that makes it a dead play. And I like the job that Brent Durbin, the head linesman, does on this play. See number 29, the line judge right there? Good call. Great job. All right, excuse me, that's Bob McElwee, the line judge. Got a nice look to the inside of that play, sees it off of the facade, and makes a definite call. Excellent job being on the spot. So a 19-yard field goal upcoming here for Jason Ball, his first from this little of a distance this year, but he couldn't convert. The ball is live. There are flags on the play, and it's going to be covered by the Philadelphia Soul. There's going to be a kick-catch violation there which is one of the unusual rules in this league, particularly. Kicking team, the five, number 91, it's a five yard penalty from the five, to be first and 10 at the 10-yard line. Kick catch interference, also almost impossible timeout. not to TV commit timeout. that infraction when you're in that close. But a great defensive series as it turns out for Philadelphia. They had a chance to let a score in. They, did, they gave up zero points, which is all you want on defense in this league. So late in the opening quarter, Jason Ball comes up empty. 
And we are tied at seven. Arena football, demonstrated by Kurt Warner and John. Nashville, Sterner, five of eight passing, 67 yards. Matt Salk for Philadelphia, seven of 11 passing, 54 yards, each man with a touchdown. So total yardage, Philadelphia 54, Nashville 81. And I know it's early in the game, Eli, but I think this is an important offensive series for Philadelphia. They need to capitalize on what their defense just gave them. A full stop, gave up no points to Nashville on their last offensive drive despite having first and goal inside of the five yard line. So Brett Muncy anxious to see his offense take advantage. Inside handoff to Hours. And Wes Hours on the third down play picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. Big E.J. Burtz was the man to lead the blocking. Wes Hours is so big. How big <laughs> is he? He swallowed up yours and mine to become ours. <laughs> oh, God. That was terrible. That is a large man terrible. carrying the football. <laughs> We've seen this before, Eli. Yep, the mishandling of the snap. It is recovered by Philadelphia. You heard Matt Salk tell our Matt Stewart on the uh, pregame that they had taken care of those bad snaps. When you and I saw Philadelphia play in Orlando earlier this year, there were four lost bad snaps and a couple that Philadelphia got back, so yeah. six in total. And Matt Salk recovered his own fumble, fortunate by the way the ball bounced. That goes down as another fumble recovery for him. You've heard me say it before, Eli. I'm hoping the AFL will eventually take that out of the stats. The quarterback center exchange yeah. fumbles and, and make that a separate stat. Not where they lead in fumble recoveries. And James Barron wants to continue to stay in Matt Salk and Mike Mabry's head. Down. Only the second yeah. penalty of the ball game. But don't, don't you think, as much as we've seen arena football and James Barron right now, yep. that to me that was a message penalty. Yeah. That I think he almost took a penalty there. They had a fumbled snap quarterback center, and he go ahead, he went ahead and fired off on the very next play to continue to keep the heat on the center Mike Mabry and the quarterback Matt Salk, hoping to continue to cause mishandled snaps throughout the ball game. James Barron's a very cagey player. I think he took that penalty almost on purpose. Mabry is a center by trade. Played center and nose guard at Central Florida. And again, they bobble it. And James Barron this time says, you see, that's why I did that. And the football is covered up by the Nashville Cats. Frank Carter, the linebacker, comes up with it. And you, partner, were right on top of that one. Well, he already knew they had already he knew that they had that problem before when Matt Sock started against Orlando and this time it pays off for Nashville. Hey Matt, you guys talked about it in the pregame. Yeah. Brett Muncy was very concerned about it. Remember when he talked to us this week that especially with Barron up there, he was going to try to time the snap and cause some problems like we saw with Sock a couple of weeks ago when we were in Orlando. Well, you remember when Matt when we talked on the phone with him he said, yes, Barron could be the guy to cause us problems, but he also expressed that he thought that it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. That, that Matt Salk would have a full week of practice. Didn't expect it. He thought it would. He said, we haven't seen that since Orlando. It must be us. <laughs> and now Nashville is going to take a timeout. Their second as injured quarterback Tony Graziani looks on from the sidelines. You know, it's interesting. When we all saw these guys in Orlando, that was all the way back in week number three of the season. You can understand, all right, Graziani gets hurt, Salk comes in, had virtually no repetitions in right. practice. But now he's had more of those, and you can see there's still, he's talking to Graziani, and they're trying to figure out exactly what he's doing wrong, because this is really significant playing time. Significant, right. only the second game of the year for him. He played some last week, yes, but significant playing time. This is only his second game of the year. And they've had all week to work on this, but the thing to keep in mind is you're not going full speed all week. I'd venture to say, and I wasn't at Philly's practices, but I don't think they had full contact, full go experiences with quarterback center exchanges as you would have with James Barron over you. That changes what you do on the field. They have to adjust. Tolliver in motion. Sterner steps up, 
looks and throws to Fleming, and Corey's got it at the 10-yard line. <laughs> Had a nice chat with him, Eli, in pregame. Well, of course you would, kind of being another Tennessee guy. And Corey says to me, what do I have to do to get these guys to understand they've just got to throw me the football? And Corey Fleming rounding into form as this season has gone on. I would not be surprised to see him have a big game tonight. He seemed to be very motivated in pregame, and with Clint Sterner back, they can establish that connection they had earlier this year. First time all AFL performer has a Super Bowl ring from his days in the NFL with the Cowboys. Cornelius Bonner on the cross there, and no communication and connection there with Tolliver. I think they were trying to run a delayed route to Corey Fleming on this on this play, but they weren't able to get it, and Clint Sterner wisely throws it into the stands rather than taking a snap. Watch Fleming here. Watch the delay route that he runs. But the coverage, I see how he waits, waits, waits. Now he's kind of come across field, but Clint Sterner didn't have that kind of time and had to throw it away. Three straight incompletions inside the 10 for Sterner. Now make it four in a row incompletions for Sterner as Reggie Doster that time. And Cornelius White, the men who were together. Nice coverage right there. I know that people are looking for a flag. Reggie yep. Doster may have been there a half a count too soon, but they like to let him play downfield a little bit more in this league than you might see in the stadium game. And I really don't have a problem <laughs> as an ex-defensive back might have that bias yeah. with no flag being thrown there. Timeout for an injury. Injury timeout. Charlie Morris with a hand injury, the big offensive lineman from Temple. And he is going to be either nursed back to health quickly or be forced to be pulled from the ball game. Again, if you're new to the Arena Football League, there are very strict substitution rules. There is not free substitution as you'd have in the stadium played game. So if a man is pulled out for injury, he is basically dead for the remainder of that quarter. Use a timeout, you can kind of get him back to health. Exactly. Well, the good thing Nashville has is the guy who was standing next to Charlie Morris, number 51, Kerry Clayton. Yep. If Morris has to go out, you move Clayton into the game and make him your starting center on offense. He's had a starting experience in this league two years with right. Columbus as a starting center. So I don't think they'd really miss a beat if he were to go in at center if Morris is unable to go on offense. What they'll do, though, right now is bring in Aaron McConnell as well to further bolster that offensive line. And there's five passes in a row, incomplete by Sterner inside the 10-yard line. No connection there with T.T. Tolliver. And even if Nashville is successful on this field goal attempt, as we see the fifth straight, and T.T. Tolliver had a chance to haul that one in and just was unable to do so. Ball seemed to be in a pretty good spot. But even if Nashville's successful, this is another good defensive series for Philadelphia because they didn't get anything, turned the ball back over to Nashville, and they're not letting Nashville capitalize with six as things stand at this moment. A 25-yard attempt. Glenn Gant gets that high snap down, and Jason Ball converts. So here in the second quarter of play, a homestanding Nashville catch. We're going on to better fame in Philadelphia after a short stint with the L.A. Rams. Short kick, Mike Brown now returning the kick because the hamstring of Steve Smith has tightened up, and Brown gets the return back inside the 20, down to the 17, and the kicker, Jason Ball, makes his second special teams tackle of the night after a 37-yard run back. <laughs> now, I know that kickers aren't known for their tackling prowess, no. Jason Ball has doubled the involvement he would like to have in this game tonight. No. But Nashville's fortunate that he does not mind putting his head in there. The bad part was the kick was not what Pat Perduto wanted. You've no. got to get it off the net. That's your first job as a kicker. High and off the net to give your coverage team time to get downfield. When you don't do that, nine times out of ten, a good return is a, is a result of that, and we just saw it. We've seen two short kicks tonight. There's the give to Hours. And Hours gets to the 14 while Jarek Hillary was run off the play. There's some significant licks being passed. Again, there's Wes Hours, six foot, 300 pounds, 
on a light day. <laughs> and you do realize, Eli, that when Special Phil time out for equipment. Another equipment uh, yeah. malfunction there. Monty Montgomery. That man right there, Wes Hours, seriously now, folks, when he played collegiately in West Virginia, he was the biggest fullback in all of America. I'm yeah. not saying that no, uh, it's hands or for, a fact, for a fact, that it was a fact. He was the largest fullback in all of the USA when he played for the Mountaineers. A very unselfish player, played some offensive line there for the Mountaineers also, but a big fan favorite in Morgantown. And when Philly flies back from Nashville, yeah. they do get the hours back. Ba -bum -bum. Would, would you stop? <laughs> would you stop? I love this guy. <laughs> the guy is great. Your puns are groaners. <laughs> Don't make me go to the well. <laughs> Off the hands of Cornelius Bonner. Incomplete. Steve Smith was there watching. Don't make me. <laughs> don't make me go to the well for some of my groaners. Oh, this is great coverage by Cornelius Bonner because it was zone defense from Nashville, which they don't like to play very often. But Cornelius Bonner is playing essentially a cornerback position, reads the throw and comes from underneath to break up the pass. Reminds me of the two antennas that got married. Yeah. The ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was great. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't get me started. <laughs> you and I are now officially <laughs> retired. From the 15. In the corner, overthrowing Sean Scott. Oh, but they'll say he comes down with the football. One hand without going out of bounds. He comes down with it for it looked to everybody as though he had overthrown Sean Scott. But Cornelius Bonner and Reggie Stevens weren't buying it, and the fans are reacting to the replay. Look at the catch. Oh, my. Legs I... down. It's a tough one because of where the foot comes down. But watch, focus on the catch, because remember earlier in the game when we had Steve Smith catch it with his arm upfield? This time, this is more of what you expect. The arm out in front, able to cradle the ball into the body and make the catch. We've had two great catches by Philadelphia. This one a little bit disputed about where his feet came down and whether or not that should have been a touchdown. But you can go ahead and throw that one out because it says 14 on the board for Philly right now. So three plays, 17 yards. It was a 14-yard touchdown despite Pat Sperduto's argument. Xander played in the NFL with the Tennessee Titans, played with the Jacksonville Jaguars, played with St. Louis's Rams, came out of Nebraska, as you said, an eye back, and he was a first team all Big 12 performer. So that guy right there, you kind of knew he was going to be uh, a factor from, well, really from his collegiate days, if not earlier. Yeah, what they've had to work on with him is defense playing the Mac linebacker position. They say he's much improved over last year, but Eli, early in this game, you gotta like the pressure Philadelphia's been putting on Clint Sterner. Unloads Alexander, flag on the play. Alexander takes it in for a touchdown. But again, there's a flag on the play at the six yard line, and there was pushing off, but who pushed who? Did Alexander push off the defense or vice versa? Pass interference on the offense, number 95. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Actually, it was number 38, I think. It was on number 95, Dwayne Missouri, unless they're calling it on James Barron. Let's take a look wide. You know, they call interference. Where's the push-up? Oh, I oh. think I get it. Do you see down yeah, here? down there. There you go. Ball's in Barron. the air, and James Barron's downfield blocking on Sean Scott while the ball's in the air. That's a no-no, and a great pickup by the officials downfield. You know, if this game were to stop right now, Eli, I think these officials get a, a great A mm -hmm. for tonight's ball game. They've been on top of every call as I've seen it. And this is not an easy game to do. Not They've at all. talked about the uh, bad blood between the two teams. Sterner sidearm release with a completion to Tolliver at the 15-yard line. Eddie Bolton makes the tackle, number six. And I talked about the pressure of Philadelphia. Clint Sterner completes this one, but watch the end of the play. He still takes a beating. In the pocket today, Clint Sterner is having to stand and deliver despite a ton of heat coming from Philadelphia. And that was still good coverage downfield by Eddie Moten.
Hillary in motion. Alexander, the fullback, stays in to block. Up the middle, nobody home off the fingertips of Hillary. The fans are wanting a penalty flag on virtually every play now because there are just some serious licks in there that are being passed one team or the other. And Nashville, third time now inside the Philly 15 with no touchdowns. And downfield, what you weren't able to see at the beginning is that Jarek Hillary and Eddie Moten had a lot of contact downfield, both banging off each other, knocked Hillary off of his route and disrupted the timing of the play, forcing his field goal attempt. A 30-yarder on the way. It is up, and it is good. We've got a 14-13 Philadelphia. Of efficiency, nine of their first 10 drives culminating in points which they really, really enjoyed. They put up a season high 58 last week, and this time they've been stopped for two field goals where they thought they had a shot at touchdowns. Out of the slack net, there's no play for Steve Smith, so we have a touchback, and Matt has found a visiting NASCAR star in the grandstands. Matt, who you got with you? Eli, and with Bush Series driver David Green, the Kleenex car, Bruco Motorsports, he'll be racing in the Pepsi 300 at the Nashville Speedway tomorrow. And first of all, what do you think about the football game? Almost as much contact out of, as much on the track. Yeah, we hope we don't have that much contact tomorrow, but it's the first one I've seen in person, and uh, it's quite a different format, it's pretty exciting, so I'm glad to be out here supporting the Cats here tonight. Hopefully some of these guys will get to come tomorrow for the there's the inside handoff to Wes Hours, and look at him carry the pile all the way out towards the 15. Matt, go back ahead with David. David, you've had some success in Nashville. You've won twice. You've won once out at the Speedway and once at the old track. What is it about Nashville? You like to get that guitar? Well, I grew up in Owensboro up the road a little bit, but yeah, the guitars are the best all series long. This is race you want to win, you want to win one here in Nashville, but uh, Nashville's been kind of home, so uh, look forward to uh, trying to put our Kleenex car in victory lane tomorrow. I'll come back for one final question, Eli. All right. Hours on the handoff. And the big guy gets to the 15-yard line with a minute 13 remaining until the half is done. We're coming up on the one-minute warning as we check back in with Matt and David. One last question, David. Going to be an unseasonably warm day tomorrow at the track. Does that have any bearing on what you have to do? This is Matt Stewart and our whole crew. Glad you're with us. Matt Salk. Quarterbacking Philadelphia. Let's see if they can make that center quarterback exchange. That was a bugaboo earlier. Long throw. Mike Brown incomplete. Cannot hang on to the football. Good recovery by Monty Montgomery to come back to the play. And an even better recovery by the wall, which helped jar it free. Nice throw by Sock. Watch Mike Brown trying to haul it in. See, the wall yep. knocks it free. Monty Montgomery late to the party. And just by that, you have an incompletion of Mike Brown frustrated because he knew that was six. You know, the problem was he used two hands. <laughs> Everybody can catch him with Steve, one hand, as we've seen. Steve Smith, Sean Scott to tell him, look, man, yeah, one, one hand next hand, time. <laughs> two hand stuff is not necessary. <laughs> Philadelphia down, I believe, what, one timeout as we just saw on the graphic? Indeed, as we work our way inside the final minute of play, don't forget Ron Jaworski will be coming up at halftime. One of the many NFLers involved in the AFL. Of course, uh, the Georgia Force, their team owner, Arthur Blank. Arthur is uh, the owner of the Falcons and the uh, Force. Uh, so many owners now crossing over. Of course, Bud Adams yep. uh, here in Nashville, who is the majority owner. We talked about Tim McGraw as a minority owner of the Cats. And the blue jerseys of Nashville reminiscent of the Houston Oilers that Bud Adams owned for so many years yep. before bringing them here to Tennessee. There's Scott. And he gets to the 23 where Monty Montgomery makes the tackle. The Houston Oilers. I had the pleasure of seeing a few games in the old Astrodome with the Oilers and that theme song they used to have. Houston Oilers number one. one. You got it. And that was all, wasn't that also the site where the fan on Monday Night Football yes. gave the one finger salute and Danny Don was. said he's just showing you that his team's number one. Indeed so, <laughs> yeah. First down play. 
hours to the 20. He's awfully nimble for a big, big guy, isn't he, Eli? Because that play was designed to go wide, and he realized there was nothing there and was able to cut it back inside with some power and pick up about three yards on his own. He was waiting to see where Ernest Allen went with the lead block, number 91. Hours spent 2003 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now, finally, the clock is stopped by Philadelphia. They let the clock run all the way down Disregard what it shows on our screen there. The time remaining is 20 seconds, not 17, and it'll be reset right there. And I think part of this is just simply to try and run plays and make sure Nashville doesn't get the ball back with a lot of time on the clock. And everybody's saying, why aren't you getting a timeout? Well, it's a little different in this league because you don't want to give that kind of time because of a shorter field. You know, it's a lot easier to come back on a team, even with less time on the clock. So you want to bleed it as much as possible if you have the ball on offense inside of one minute. Nashville averages scoring 50 points a ball game. Philadelphia averages scoring 47 a ball game. And we are obviously way under the norm. All I know is after a game with either one of these teams, you have to take a lot of Advil for all the head ringing you're going to have because both of them will strike you. Flag on the play, nothing there on the out route. Mike Brown stopped his pattern and the football flew into the stands. We may have offsides on Nashville. I think maybe the defensive back got into the neutral zone trying to cover. Tom McCabe is the referee. Offside on defense, number 20. The five-yard penalty remains second down. Yeah, Robert Freeman was trying to cover the motion man and ended up jumping up just a little bit too far into the neutral zone and was flagged on the play. Robert, a defensive back in college at Clark College in Atlanta. The 16 seconds to go until halftime. Philadelphia would think this is textbook if they could score as the clock runs out in the half. Scott in motion. Finding him. Touchdown. Sean Scott, the motion man. 16 yards on the receiving end. 12 seconds to go until the break. I mean, they did a great job bleeding the clock down to 12 seconds. Of course, they would like for it to be zeros. But they'll take that nice route by Sean Scott, kind of a speed out route, more of a speed flag going to, going to the corner of the end zone. Great timing with Matt Sock for the touchdown. Now Todd France to attempt the extra point. And the score now is Philadelphia 21 and the Nashville Cats 13. So they go six plays, 45 yards, in 20, excuse me, in two minutes and six seconds. Terrific job, they had great protection. Didn't need it for very long, but there is no leakage inside. Offensive line for Philadelphia covers everything up. Sock able to throw on time and hit Scott. And Philadelphia has played a terrific first half defensively and has allowed their offense time to get it together and score these points. Because you remember early in the game, they were both trading zeros. Right. Defenses were shutting each other down. Now Philadelphia is throwing three points at Nashville while scoring sixes themselves. There's your advantage for Philly. Brett Muncy making sure they have no more than eight players out there. Yeah, it seems like the mundane, doesn't it? Yeah. It's the mundane that if you don't cover it, they get you beat in a ball game. Those little details, you've seen it for so many years, Eli. Yes. If, you don't if you don't pay attention to detail, it jumps up and gets you. The best ones always do. Jarek Hillary is the deep man for the Nashville Cats. Sixth year out of Tennessee State to field the kick from the rookie out of the University of Toledo, Todd France. Again, a short kick. Should Hillary. be a good return. Good coverage again. And the clock down to eight seconds as Sean Scott makes the tackle. So eight seconds remaining for the Nashville Cats. 
Eli, that's twice we've seen short kickoffs by Philadelphia that right. have been covered very, very well by their by their coverage team. We saw a short kick from Nashville that turned into a big return by Philadelphia. Often a recipe for a long return is a kick not off the net. In this case, Philadelphia twice today has gotten it done. Wide post and a hard two, hard two. Wide post. Kind of like Cedric Bonner in Arizona, a very wordy quarterback call. They literally tell every there. receiver what to do. Catch is made. Four seconds to go out to midfield. That was Cornelius Bonner. Some QBs get into the huddle and they call a number. And yes. that's the play right there. Others, kind of like we're hearing from Sterner or, as we said, uh, Cedric Bonner and others, they'll say X such and such, Y such and such, Z such and such. They will make sure they delineate what every receiver is supposed to do. All depends on your offensive coordinator and what they're comfortable with in their playbook. And Nashville, with only four seconds on the clock, Decides not to throw one deep, but to bring out the field goal unit instead. And timeout is being called by Nashville to set up the field goal. Their final timeouts. It will be roughly a 40 yard, seven yards deep. Again, great coverage. Sean Scott, first guy down, number 88 with help from Cornelius White, two excellent special teamers. You know, if memory serves, it was not me, it was not Matt, but it was somebody on this crew who has access to a microphone who said earlier, you know, I believe we'll see yet another kicker for the Nashville Cats. <laughs> I didn't mean to jinx them that way. That wasn't what I was thinking. <laughs> Okay, so my apologies to Jason Ball if he thinks I'm putting the hex on him because I'm not. No one wants to see a guy get hurt like that. And boy, for Pat Perduto, a lot of extra decisions. But what he's most worried about is getting this offense untracked and back into the end zone. Clint Sterner, he has Tolliver. Touchdown! 40 yards, beating Eddie Moten. T. T. Tolliver. His second longest reception of the year. What a throw, what a catch. And they don't call him TT, two touchdown Tolliver for nothing. Another double touchdown or more night. Two thus far this evening, a guy they said had a bad foot. He's running awfully well. And Peter Parker, you may have to worry about your job. The way he's scaling the walls in the end zones. <laughs> and they are going to go for two points here, yep. not only just to tie it up, but again, the injury to the kicker, Jason Ball. They're going to go for two. Sterner to the wide out. He is bumped off the play, makes the catch for the two-point conversion. So Corey Fleming fights his way through the bump makes the grab the penalty will likely obviously be pass interference on the defense number 21 that penalty declined decline three double plays a two-point try tv timeout so the two-point conversion to corey fleming around and maybe cause a play it's gonna be interesting it is an end over end kick that'll go into the stands and that is a devastating play here because yes. in this league the ball comes out to the 20-yard line and on a 50-yard field, a kick out of bounds or if the kick hits the scoreboard, something of that nature, the largest single penalty in one play you can have in this league. They like to promote the kick return game, and that's a, that's the consequence if you're not able to do it. Jarek Hillary, a nice kick yeah. just over the sidewall, and that hurts them in field position. He said it went far enough. <laughs> it just didn't get it in the right no. area. Average field position has been the 17 for Philadelphia. So this is in that general ballpark as Steve Smith is on the receiving end of the Matt Sock throw out to the 24 of Nashville. Steve Smith, number 84, interesting story. He is so good. And you wonder why did he leave from here to go to Kansas City and then come back. When I say here, I mean Philadelphia. Just a lot of, you know, talk around the league about different items, nothing ever verified. But, you know, talk can be as dangerous as, as fact sometimes. 
Bottom line, Brett Muncy said, hey, he's a good guy. He's listening to what we want to do. He's bought into the plan, and that's why he was brought back. Yeah, all I know is his production yeah. <laughs> is awfully good. Exactly. And every team in the league would like that kind of production from their offensive specialist. I mean, this is a guy who was sixth in the league in all-purpose yards coming into this evening with over 1,600 yards. I mean, in 2005, he caught 107 passes at 28 touchdowns. They also thought that Marcus Knight would probably really pan out in Philadelphia as the handoff to Chad Dukes gets the first down. A lot of folks figured that Marcus Knight would really pan out, and, and that didn't quite happen. Steve Smith has come back and, and quite honestly has been the spark that the sole offense needed. He knew he had it in him. It just kind of took a little yeah. massaging to get going again. Yeah, well, if you catch 107 balls the season before, it's not likely that your drop-off is going to be so sudden that yeah. all of a sudden you can't play. This, this guy can flat out play. Sock. Overthrows Mike Brown and Monty Montgomery could not hang on for a bid for what would have been his eighth interception of the year. I think that's a ball that Matt Sock would rather have back. I think he wanted a different route out of his receiver. And then he relied on his strong arm to make this play anyway. He wanted Mike Brown to bend it upfield a little bit more and use his body in front of Monty Montgomery. Instead, the ball sails a little, and Montgomery becomes essentially the receiver unable to haul it in. <laughs> Gave it an effort to become one of those one-handed grabbers this evening, but couldn't hang on. There, Sean Scott can't find the handle, and it's incomplete great point, around partner. the 15 yard line. It's a great point you just brought about the one-handed catchers because it started early. T.T. Tolliver, the first touchdown was essentially a one-handed catch as he bounced off the wall. Steve Smith, Sean Scott, Corey Fleming on the two-point conversion. We've seen it all this evening. We really have. If you're just joining us, it was 21-13 Philadelphia at halftime. We are now early in the third as Smith is in motion. They do the pump fake and go to the 10-yard line where Sean Scott makes the grab and is very close to but shy of the first down. Nashville came into this game with 20 sacks and a reputation for getting a lot of pressure on passers. Look at this. Really good protection overall from the Philadelphia offensive line. See that right there? They're really not close to Matt Salk as he delivers that pass. So you have to give a lot of credit to the O-line guys from Philadelphia. Mike Mabry, number 65 in the middle. Ernest Allen, number 91. Yep, the catch with the league leading 20 sacks on pace for 29 as Chad Dukes gets it for the first down on good second effort down to the eight yard line. If you're curious, the league record for sacks in a season is 38. The Cats now have 20 as we're playing here in week 12. The 1988 Pittsburgh Gladiators. And remember, that was done in what would now be considered a short season. Yeah. We're exactly. playing 16 games now. I don't know the exact number the Gladiators played, but I'm guessing 12 to 14 would be tops. First and goal. Right side, Mike Brown. He'll fight his way to the two. That's where he was impacting the wall and was touched by the defender. So it'll be a second and goal from there. Matt Sock really much more comfortable under center now. We haven't seen a problem with quarterback center exchange in a while. Able to fire, and Mike Brown powers down close to the goal line. You said 1987 for sacks, right, Eli? 88. 88? Yep. Well, they played 12 games that year. Wow. Mike Brown is the fullback, gets the handoff, and he is in for a touchdown behind the block of Chad Dukes. That is going to be the fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Mike Brown of the Philadelphia Soul. Great lead block. Offensive line and Dukes 32. Steve Smith on the corner occupying his defender. But they just cleaned out an alley for Mike Brown, and he hurdles into the end zone on the dive, and Philly goes back in front. The product of the Charleston Swamp Foxes of AF2. 
the developmental league and now the extra point is up and it is good. So we are by trailing 28 21. Nashville is home against the Kansas City Brigade. Why? Because Jarek Hillary's averaged about 21 yards a kick return. Yep. It's been less than that this evening on, kick on kickoff returns. Indeed, they're averaging a start from their own 12 as that pass is incomplete. And we look downstairs and see that Matt Stewart has found a special guest. Indeed, I'm with Eddie Kaya. Tight spot right here. Long throw, flag on the play as Tolliver is given a seat. Compliments of Kevin Gaines. And as we check back in with Matt, I guess it was a four point drop kick in those days, Matt. Is it a four point drop kick in those days? Yes. Uh, all drop kick for a four, uh, four point field goal and two point extra point. Well, your pass interference on the defense, number 21, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Your first coaching staff was Jay Gruden, offensive coordinator. Pat Sperduto, your defensive coordinator, has a pretty darn good coaching right. staff. And Bernard Wilson was our secondary coach, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they've been very successful, uh, both of them. Proud, Eddie, thanks a lot. Of them. Eddie, proud thanks of them. a lot for being with us. I know you're very proud of them. Thank you. Eddie Kayat. Oh, one of the great ones. Yep, he was there when this league was put together, basically. Good man. There's Dan Alexander. Inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Big boy football. 13 more yards on the ground for Nashville. And this is as close to a draw play as you'll see in the Arena Football League. Dan Alexander powering up the middle. Got great blocking from his guys up front. Carved a nice hole. And Dan Alexander knows what to do with the football once he gets into the secondary. They've got 44 yards on the ground already, the Cats do. 30 by Dan Alexander alone on four carries. Hard to keep this guy off the field when he gives you that type of production. Flags, flags, and more flags. Sterner cannot get away. Lost the football. It is covered up by both he and Raheem Orr of Philadelphia. But there's got to be some holding on the interior there. Basically, if he didn't hold, hold up. He your should. Hand. He should have. <laughs> he should yeah. have held more because they had a lot of pressure on Clint Stern. Personal foul, leg whip on the offense number 99. That penalty is declined. Will be second down. And we were just talking about Dan wow. Alexander's running the football. You have to be a complete back. Watch 38. Really doesn't get a good block there. And Dwayne Missouri is the first guy to flush the play against Clint Sterner. He doesn't get him, but allows Ernest Allen to continue in pursuit to the right of your screen. Dwayne Missouri 95 was the guy Alexander was supposed to get. That totally threw off the timing of the play. Did they call that a late hit though as the no, reason? No, they called a leg whip up oh, front. Oh, a leg whip. I misunderstood. Okay. Yes. Saying how could it have been a late hit? I misunderstood the English language as Corey Fleming makes the grab across midfield. Kevin Gaines wrestles him off the play. Eli, you're a very fluent individual. But sometimes it's tough for all of us to speak referee. You know, <laughs> it makes it difficult for us at times. But that's what he had called was a leg whip up front, not a late hit. And now Nashville's in a hole on third down. Six years that man's worked in the Arena Football League, Tom McCabe. Collegiately, he works in the Mid-America Conference. One of three McCabe's, but he's not related to the other two working in the Arena Football League. Right, the other two are... Uh, father and son as there's a completion to Corey Fleming veteran Bill McCabe and his son Mike McCabe this McCabe though is not related to the bunch this guy is from the Illinois area remember I told you earlier in the game that I thought Corey Fleming was a candidate to have a big night mm -hmm. you know, he's a guy who was really motivated to try and get on the books, as they call it. In other words, increase his stats, but not for selfish means. In order to try and help his team win. He's like, he told me for the game, said, I'm a veteran who's produced in this league. Just throw me the ball. But he didn't say it like a certain guy says it in that league outdoors. Yeah. They go the other way this time to Cornelius Bonner, who's down to the three yard line. And He's kept out of the end zone by Cornelius White and Mike Brown. There's Cornelius White. 
Tying up Cornelius Bonner. Great move by Cornelius Bonner. And what's different this year, Eli, in the past, you used the wall as an extra defender because you knew if he got to the wall and stepped on the sideline, he was out of bounds. But nowadays, the wall is actually in play. So if you're not contacting the receiver while he's on the wall, he can sneak by you on the short side. Here comes Alexander. And down he goes, losing a yard. Losing a yard. Yeah. Back to the five yard line. I think Ryan Roth, his teammate number 32, was out in front blocking. Actually had more to do with Alexander going down than the yeah. defense did. As Alexander tried to make a cut, he got tangled up with Roth number 32's legs, and that brought him down. Look at that. Real disparity in total yards, but the big number is on the scoreboard up here. Philadelphia up seven at this time. Tolliver fakes the throw, takes it in for the touchdown. T.T. Tolliver. Behind the blocking of Ryan Roth, who you spoke of just moments ago, number 32. Eli on the reverse, when he faked the pass, it's almost looked like the old Statue of Liberty. Watch how he sets up. See that? Look at that. Yep. He's set to go. And now he tucks it down and takes it to the end zone. Two quick thoughts. Either the old Statue of Liberty, or do you remember the old New York Giants logo with a quarterback yes, throwing I outside the stadium? Yep. Yep. The old Giant? That's yep. what T.T. Tolliver looked like, showing all of his talents with a rushing touchdown. Now with no kicker, they go for two, but there are flags. A lot of folks were moving before the snap. T.T. Tolliver ran it in. And now with no kicker, they are going for two. Remember the injury to Jason Ball. Nashville has no bona fide kicker. Conduct on the offense, snapping the ball while the umpire was in the zone. We'll replay the try. You know, they've made an emphasis this year on, uh, was it, you know, you can't have deceptive plays. Yeah. Trying to really deceive, the, you know, the defense, you know, the quick snaps, lining up and all that other stuff. I think that would go in that category. And this officiating staff, from my estimation, they've been on it from the word yeah. go tonight. You know, o only they've problem, really been on it. Only problem they've got now is without a kicker, a two-point conversion from out near the 13-yard line. Yeah, that's a big play This is here. a big, big play. Yeah, it gives you more room to work, but still, the odds are with the defense. Sterner intercepted, and it can be run back by Eddie Moten. Moten gets back to the 13. The play is dead at that point on the run back of a two. Here's Steve Smith fielding that kickoff by Hillary. And he gets out to about the 17 yard line. Matt, what you got for us? Eli, you just have to understand that, uh, that it's going to be even more difficult for the Cats to get those two point conversions against a defense that is number one in the league in red zone defense. Brett Muncy says that, you know, preparation is the key in personnel who understand the ankles. As you pointed out, Moten's second consecutive week, he's had a big interception on a two point conversion. Yeah, a lot of coaches subscribe to the theory that it's a lot harder to score in close because of the condensed end zones. But I'm, I'm with you, Eli, in terms of that was too far for Nashville, and the yeah. advantage went to the defense. Nothing there on the try to the left side. You know who we've not heard much of tonight? That's Rob Milanese. Rob Milanese, the young guy out of the University of Pennsylvania, has no receptions this evening. He is... He, he has been a major part of the offense early in the year, had 24 receptions. Then all of a sudden, he wasn't getting the playing time and probably found himself on the hot seat a little bit. He so, is out there now, yeah. number 15. We saw him throw a shoe early in the yeah. game and haven't talked about him since. Remember, he suffered from migraine problems, migraine headaches earlier this year. Had to come out of two ball games as a result yeah. of those. They think they've got that under control at this point. We'll see whether he becomes a factor down the stretch. Rob Milanese, who was in camp with the uh, San Diego Chargers and played in NFL Europe with the Rhine Fire. Well, you see the time remaining. Third period about done, so we're going to put a capper on this one and go into the on this On this occasion this evening, they need pressure on Matt Sock here in the fourth quarter. And there's Rob Milanese. We had talked about him before, and he has wrestled to a stop 
by Monty Montgomery at the 18-yard line. Through three periods, Nashville 208 yards, Philadelphia 142. We have seen only five penalty flags in this uh, football game. Way under what I had quite honestly expected. Yeah, a little bit different than the over-under preceding the ball game, but we would, uh, as we would have thought. I'm going to ask you a trivia question here in a minute. Look forward to it. But after a while, we'll let Matt answer it for us. But we'll let the folks put their trivia hats on. There's the give. Hard running by Sean Scott down to the 10 yard line. There is only one player. Here's your trivia question, folks. There's only one player in AFL history who has been a starting quarterback, a backup quarterback, a starting wide receiver, a linebacker and a kick return specialist. There is also only one player in AFL history to record more than 5,000 passing yards in his career, 500 receiving yards, 400 rushing yards, and 400 yards in kickoff returns in his career. And that gentleman is here tonight. We'll learn a little bit more about him a bit later on from Matt Stewart. But put your thinking hats on, folks. See if you can come up with that name. Meanwhile, Delmonico Lamont Montgomery, Monty to his friends, the defensive specialist for the Nashville Cats. Looks like maybe a stinger or something. Yeah, and unfortunately for Nashville, he's going off the field. And he's going out of the game. So let's look at their secondary. It'll be Cornelius Bonner. Robert Freeman will now come into the game. And Reggie Stevens. If I'm Philadelphia and I'm Jim Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, if I'm passing the ball right now, my first attack yeah. is right at Robert Freeman. Not because he's a bad player, but I always go after a guy fresh off the bench. I want to see if his motor's revving high and get at him right now. Now, Freeman is talented. He's a speedy ball player. He was a defensive back in college, but Charles is right. Go right for that potential weaker spot. Slant, touchdown, that simple to Sean Scott, 10 yards. Touchdown, Philadelphia. And, and that was not an attack specifically on Robert Freeman. They ran a route that allowed Scott to come underneath as they ran a clear out route on Robert Freeman. He and Rob Milanese did the crisscross. You know, the defensive backs would be screaming about pick, pick, pick. But that was a very legal play by Philadelphia. Ran off downfield, came underneath with the slant route, and the soul have added seven more points. And Todd France adds the extra point, and there's another Nashville cat down. Slow and getting up is Frank Carter, who will now limp to the bench, and we'll update you on that when we come back. Three in his first game in 94. Here's Jarek Hillary on the run back to the 14 yard line and one thing about Connell Maynard and the guy could get it done yes. never lacked confidence no not at not all, at all. And, and there's no reason to with the stats the yep. superlatives you ticked off how about this is if this doesn't tell you what a great athlete he is he has bowled a perfect game 300 mm. and he also is a scratch golfer really yes and I asked him how things were going on the coaching side he said well quarterback last year threw for over 2500 yards and 25 touchdowns. I'm the passing game coordinator. I like those kind of numbers. So he's getting it done both on the field and off as a coach. Played for the old New York City Hawks. Been started. around a lot yeah. of places. Carolina Cobra starter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Orlando, of course, for a long time as there's a completion to Alonzo Nix. First time we've called the name of the rookie from Chattanooga here this evening. And that's a little bit of a surprise. He's really come on. This is, I believe, his fourth game of arena football. In the last couple of weeks, he's played fairly well. I mean, he had 94 yards and two touchdowns at Colorado, 96 yards and a touchdown last week at Las Vegas on five catches. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that they eventually see as an offensive specialist in this league with his type of talent. Came from the same school that spawned one Terrell Owens. Yeah. Chattanooga. We'll take the talent. Let's leave the rest of it out of it. <laughs> There's a souvenir en route to Corey Fleming. And there you go. Hand it off to the youngin. Those are the guys who sang the national anthem, yes, I believe. Yes, they are. The, the, the Warren the Warren, brothers. the Warren brothers. Yeah. We always wondered where they had gone. We found them. 
There's the, hey, there's the second half of the duo. Yep. And they did a nice job on the anthem they today, did. too. Wes Hours, the big fullback for Philadelphia, who also plays linebacker defensively, just limped off the field for the Philadelphia Soul. My goodness, we're seeing injuries. And there's Sterner, who throws a one hopper to the goal line incomplete. Oh, what a combination Philadelphia has going right now, Eli. Excellent coverage downfield. Moten number six, Dosker number 24. Okay, it, it looks like 21, Kevin Gaines, an all AFL performer in the past. And the pressure up front, collapsing of the pocket, and they're really laying a lick on Clint Sterner today. There's Chad Dukes, 32, Dwayne Missouri, 95. And yep. they're just bringing the pressure. Ernest Allen collapsing the pocket inside, number 91. There's Sterner throwing. Tolliver can't make a one-hand grab, though he gave it a great effort. And now remember, folks, there is no kicker for the Nashville Cats. No bona fide kicker because of the injury to Jason Ball. So there's no thought of going for three here. Now they have to come back and go for it. Tolliver almost another tremendous catch. And I think Clint Sterner hurt his hand on the last play. I saw him shaking it and holding it as he went to the sideline initially. He's such a tough guy, you'll never get him to admit it. There you see Sterner's numbers this evening. Yeah, what we don't see is the type of pressure he's been under all night from Philadelphia. Fourth down play. Throw it away, and another souvenir as Sterner got rattled and Philadelphia will hold. Eli, I would mentioned that I thought he hurt his hand on the previous play. Yeah. That throw, to me, was indicative of a guy who didn't have the proper feeling in his hand. That thing just took off and sailed on it. Yeah. He saw he had an open target, and he tried to deliver, and that thing ended up in the fourth row. Not normal for Clint Sterner. So Clint Sterner sees this effort come up shy. Sports poll comes out every week. Yeah, Philadelphia at the number nine spot, and a win tonight would vault them upwards. By our side, Mike Brown. And he's inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. Most important defensive possession of the night for the Nashville Cats. Yep. We've detailed the issues that they're facing now. No kicker, so you're always going for two, or you can't kick a field goal, so you have to go for it on fourth down. They cannot afford to let Philadelphia get a touchdown in this situation. A field goal or less has to be the goal for Nashville right now. There's Monty Montgomery. He has returned after that injury of a few moments ago. Delmonico Lamont. I love that name. The give to Mike Brown. Brown is impacted against the wall and tackled at the nine yard line by Montgomery and Dan Alexander. Mike Brown, who played with the Orlando Predators the last couple of weeks, but was a defensive back collegiately. And now Monty Montgomery is again hurt. The guy we just told you about is down. He walked towards the bench. He was involved in this. And now Philadelphia knocking at the door. Over the top, touchdown, Mike Brown. Mike Brown beating Robert Freeman, the man who was just inserted as the defensive specialist. But did we talk about a series ago when yeah. Montgomery got hurt and Freeman had to come in? It's not that the guy coming in is not capable, but you need to check it. See what he's got because he's coming off the bench. You want to see if his motor started, if he's fully engaged in the game. And typically a guy coming off the bench is going to be a half step behind until he gets up to speed, attack him early, and that's exactly what Philadelphia did. Todd France adds the extra point. So now as they pay homage to our neighbors to the south here, the state of Alabama, with a little sweet home Alabama from Leonard Skinner in the background, they are standing in tribute there while celebrating in Philadelphia as the Soul score yet again. Scoring drive for Matt Salk and crew, 28 yards in a minute 58. Philadelphia, one touchdown in their first three possessions, and now Matt Stewart, they have five TDs in their last five possessions. How about that change of fortune? 
And they've lost Montgomery, as you mentioned. He's done for the night. He, with his 62 tackles on the season, he goes to the locker room. He had a stinger, his first injury, his second injury, when he collided with the wall, bruised ribs. Thanks for the update. Boy, that, that really hurts Nashville. They came into the game the healthiest they had been in a long time. And unfortunately, that, that luck is not held as this game has progressed this evening. When you lose a kicker, you know things aren't going right for you. Here's Jarek Hillary. Oh, again, the coverage yep. has been tremendous. Been superb. By Philadelphia. Kevin Gaines, that time, number 21. I mean, Jarek Hillary came into this game averaging nearly 21 yards a kickoff return. Look at this starting position, six yard line. They, they come into the game, they average starting on their own 16. Now 11 and a half yards. That's the That's average That's the average starting. for the game. 11.5 yep. yard line. You cannot have better kick coverage, especially considering the kickers rarely hit the net. Kevin Gaines, one of the better performers in the Arena Football League, a former all AFL defensive specialist. Now, Nashville has run the ball well tonight, 48 yards, but there's scant little time to start rushing the football as that pass is deflected down by Dwayne Missouri, the big lineman out of Northwestern. As a matter of fact, tonight, Charles, between the two teams, 85 rushing yards, 48 for Nashville, 37 for Philadelphia. And that's been terrific for Philadelphia. 50 basic C corner on a hard two, hard two right because they played the same type of big boy football that Nashville espouses. The same type of physical brand. And Philadelphia getting the upper hand this evening. Sterner going long. He's got Cornelius Bonner, but he can't find the football. Mike Brown was with him stride for stride. The same Mike Brown who scored the touchdown at the other end of the field moments ago. And they had a chance on this play. Some of the best protection Clint Sterner's had in a while. But Bonner thinks the ball's going to come over his left shoulder. It ended up coming over his right shoulder. And as he tried to adjust on the fly, unable to get over there and catch the ball. Time's a fleeting, though each team does have all three of their timeouts remaining. Sterner nearly intercepted by Moten. Nearly intercepted by Eddie Moten. You know what else is on the line here tonight? Nashville is the only remaining team in the league undefeated at home. Yeah, and they've been five and zero. First time they've ever been five and zero at home to start a season in franchise history. And Eddie Moten coming out of what they call the sky coverage, coming underneath as the cornerback again in the zone, following the eyes of Clint Sterner, drifted deep and knocked away the pass. Cats have thrown a league leading 18 interceptions. And here comes a big fourth down play. Over the top, grab is made. Huge reception across midfield by Cornelius Bonner. And how the Cats needed that. 20 yards on the pickup with Mike Brown covering. What they tried to do with this coverage was take Mike Brown and knock off the slot guy, which turned out to be Cornelius Bonner. He contacted him. But in doing so, he's still able to get past him and come underneath. That knocked Brown actually off of his coverage as he comes over. Watch, right there was the contact, and that allowed Bonner underneath to get past Brown and catch the football. Now back to live action. Everybody's covered, so Sterner just buried that one. He was also under pressure from Raheem Orr, the rookie linebacker out of Rutgers. Tell you something, Nashville needed a win here tonight. If you go to seven and five, that puts a lot of possibilities back in play. And potentially gives Colorado some breathing room. Yeah. You know, Colorado this, this weekend, they're at Kansas City in the feature game on Sunday. We've got teams like Grand Rapids, Las Vegas, Los Angeles about to be eliminated from playoff competition or consideration had things worked well. But Pat's Perduto right there, the head coach of the Cats said, we'll just make it easy. We win tonight, he says, and it's, yeah, it's, and a it's, it's done. Don't worry about it. And if they don't, it all of a sudden has to go another week with Kansas City coming to town next week. And again, a game 
that Nashville fans figured they ought to win. And they'd be correct uh, by, based on record this year. They should beat Kansas City. Yeah. Nearly another Moten interception. Nearly another Moten pick. Cornelius Bonner was the intended receiver. And he, and he paid not just for the miss, but watch Mike Brown at the end of the play.